Coming up next, more than two dozen people are hurt in an explosion south of the border. We have the very latest. Plus, a huge mess at a local shopping center when a big rig goes over a fire hydrant. This ADU is being built just 17 and a half inches from the chimney next door. We take a closer look at how this was allowed to happen. Tipping itself checkouts is becoming more prevalent in some parts of the country. We asked San Diegans how they'd feel about that. Caring for the caregiver. I'm Abby Black with the free respite services for those who are taking care of our loved ones. And time to honor the man who loved one of the best baseball fields in the country, Ralph Cripe Day. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. 28 people are hurt with four in serious condition tonight after an explosion rocked a building in Tijuana. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetta. The explosion happened about three miles from the border. CBS 8's Jesse Pagan is here with what we're learning tonight. Jesse. Yeah, Carla, Marcella, up until just a bit ago, emergency crews were working to rescue one of those people who was stuck under all this debris right here. After about an hour and a half of work, they were able to get that person out. Meantime, the whole area surrounding the building is blocked off since it could collapse at any moment. This is a scene in Tijuana, about three miles in from the border after a building exploded just after 9.30 this morning. In the, in the lugar, hay daños considerables. Tijuana's Secretary of Citizen Safety tells us the greenish building here is considerably damaged and compromised. Crews have been working to stabilize it so they can go through it. For more than an hour, they worked to get one person stuck under the rubble out. Y también, eh, se ha ordenado el, uh, we don't know exactly what happened, but the secretary says crews have blocked off and will be monitoring the entire block in case of a gas leak or anything else that could trigger another blow. 911 calls this morning reported the sound of an explosion for blocks out from the building. Safety drones also caught it. Civil protection officials say a gas leak caused an explosion at the building four years ago, and the apartments on top were not supposed to be livable. Yeah, officials tell us the person rescued from under the debris was pinned at the waist with first and second degree burns on half their body. They are one of the four in serious condition in the hospital right now. They said the apartments above were uh, unlivable. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that means that there weren't that many people there and that's the best we could probably hope for. Right? Yeah, we were waiting to find out exactly what that means. Uh, again, they were closed off, cordoned off, not supposed to be livable given the past explosion four years ago in that area. And again, nothing confirmed though on whether or not this time it was a gas explosion. They're working on figuring that out. Civil uh, citizen safety uh, officials down there said that they were on the lookout around the block to see if there was any other kind of gas leak, but so far they're not going as far as confirming this as a gas leak explosion yet. All right, we'll keep on track of that. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, Jesse. Wow, take a look at the parking lot at the hub in Hillcrest. Tonight it is dry and back to normal, but as you can see, that was not the case earlier today. San Diego police say a big rig driver accidentally ran over a fire hydrant near the loading dock at the Ralphs on University Avenue, causing this big mess. Several feet of water flooded the parking lot and went over a slope, actually bringing down a tree right there and spilling mud onto nearby Washington Street and on the 163 below. It took firefighters about 45 minutes to get the flow under control. The exit from Washington to 163 was also closed for a short time. Teachers with the San Diego Unified School District are demanding a new contract. Up until about 20 minutes ago, hundreds of staff members with the San Diego Education Association were protesting at the district office. SDEA says they've had 15 bargaining sessions with the district and still no contract deal has been reached. In the latest proposal, educators say they want more school counselors, nurses, and elementary teacher prep time. SDEA says the district seemed unwilling to negotiate things like wages. The city of San Diego says it's going to sue SeaWorld over $12 million in unpaid rent. The city attorney's office tells us all legal options are on the table, including eviction. Yesterday, the city council voted in favor of a lawsuit. City Council President Sean Elo Rivera says SeaWorld is boasting record earnings and is opening up another park in Abu Dhabi this month. The lawsuit has not been filed yet, and Rivera says he hopes SeaWorld pays back the money before that happens. We reached out to SeaWorld for comment, but did not hear back. There are questions tonight about cannabis packaging and if it's too appealing to kids. Public health groups and the California PTA think so. As our political reporter Morgan Reiner tells us, it's why one state lawmaker wants to end the practice of selling cannabis with packaging that makes it look like candy. 
It's packaging like this that Assemblymember Jackie Irwin says appeals to kids. Poison control centers calls due to pediatric cannabis exposures have skyrocketed since 2016. California Poison Control saw 200 reports of cannabis ingestion in 2010. In 2020, the number jumped to over 1,600. Take a look at this graph. This is the ingestion rate for kids under the age of 10 at one hospital in San Diego. The average age of child who ingests cannabis that's included in this graph is two years old. Dr. Natalie Lobb is a director of clinical research at Rady Children's Hospital. She said most of the time, the toddlers get into edibles within their own home. We are seeing very young children under the age of five developing seizures. They stop breathing, their heart stops, they need to be admitted to the intensive care unit, and some of them even tragically die. So Irwin proposed AB 1207, which would prohibit the production and sale of cannabis products that look like candy, soda, and snacks. Why isn't this already a law in the books? Because there's big um, scare tactics that if we do not advertise um, in, with cartoon characters, we will not um, be able to bring in the revenue cannabis uh, industry has uh, promised. She says there is already existing language in law about attractiveness to children, but it's not as clearly defined as needed. How will it be enforced if passed? The Department of Cannabis Control would be enforcing on a case-by-case -case basis. Maisha Bahati owns Crystal Nugs in Sacramento. As a legal cannabis shop owner, she told me she supports this legislation. She said protecting kids should be the top priority. Morgan Reiner reporting for us. Thanks, Morgan. The city of San Diego is taking its next step to make the gas lamp promenade walkable for San Diegans. Today, city leaders unveiled new bollards that will ultimately stop traffic. The goal is to close Fifth Avenue to cars from noon to 2 a.m. so that pedestrians have a safe place to walk. When not in use, those bollards will be stored in racks on street corners. City crews will install more of these at every crosswalk along Fifth Avenue from Broadway to K Street. Still ahead tonight, do undocumented workers pay taxes? We verify. Plus, the county admits taking millions of dollars from foster youth, where the money went, and the push to change state laws. And the craziest thing happened today at the coast. The sun came out in the month of May, and temperatures reflect that. 70 downtown, I'm meteorologist Sean Stiles with your microclimate forecast. And when it comes to Alzheimer's and dementia patients, who's taking care of the caregiver? Up next, some of the free resources that are available.